let's say your part diameter is five inches. You got five inch round stock. And you have to make this cut. Now, if you weren't using a can cycle, you'd have to manually program all these cuts to whittle away the material. Well, that's a lot of work and it's a lot of, if, if you were like me, I had to write all my own codes. Well, that got old pretty quick. So I figured out a way after my first began, there's gotta be an easier way. That's it. So let's say we're gonna face the part. This is my preset drawing of a tool. So we're gonna face the part and then you're gonna begin your can cycle. We wanna remove all of this material. So we're gonna do a half inch radius here. We're gonna do a two and a half inch diameter here. We're gonna do a quarter inch by 45 degree cut. Then it's gonna go up to a 4.75 diameter. And then uh, we're gonna come off the part and that's it. I'm gonna show you this part first and then I'm gonna erase that and then I'm gonna come back and show you from the coding section how I wrote that, how I would write it. So let's say we're using tool one, offset one, and I'm gonna presume you saw my other videos and explained all that stuff, so I'm just gonna kinda of move ahead. Uh, a G50, spindle speed of 1500 maximum. I'm just throwing these out there, that's just for this demonstration. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna turn the spindle on at 500 with M03. We're gonna wrap it 20 thousandths in front of this surface, this is our G54 surface, and we're gonna do a surface speed of 400 RPMs, and all that's explained in previous videos. So now, we're gonna wrap it down to X5.25, so we're 250 thousandths above the diameter of the part, turn on the core, and we're gonna feed down to X negative 0.065, so we're going past center line, and we're doing 8 thousandths per revolution, it's just for this, that could be whatever. We're gonna wrap it back up to X5.1, Z.08, so you're 80 thousandths in front of the part. If you are going to use a different tool to do a finish pass, then you have to use a G70, which is a finish pass. And I don't want to get too crazy with that right now. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this, we're going to make it Z0. We're going to wrap it to Z0, and we're going to face the part. This is where I'm going to pick up. I'm going to use that. I'm going to erase most of this. I'm going to move this last line up here. I'll be back. Here. I wrote down all my dimensions as far as where I want my cutter to be. Starting with, this is, this is where we left off. So 5 inches 100. So we're 100 thousandths above the part or I should say above the diameter, 80 thousandths in front. Because when you set up to do a can cycle, you want to be off the part a little ways. If you were using cutter comp, I'm not going to get into that because that gets a little tricky doing that. So I'm not going to do that in this video. This is just kind of really basic. So how do you write this? G71 we have to enter a P value and also a Q value. What does that mean? See all these line numbers here? If I always did that in my programming, I always ran line numbers. The P is telling me I need to go to my first line to start the can cycle. So what I'm doing here and this can vary, everyone's got different programming styles. So say we, we already faced the part, we're gonna remember, because this is gonna be two and a half inches diameter, I want a half inch radius, so in previous videos you have to double that, so it's one inch. So you're gonna start at 1.5. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna wrap it down to X 1.4, so it's a little bit under, and 20 thousandths in front of the part. So that's where I want it to start. So, P12. Hopefully that shows up on camera. So that's where I want it to start. 
From there, it's going to do a feed mood up to X 1.5 to Z0. Now, this could vary. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You can do whatever you want. You can actually have it feed into zero first and then go up. I'm just kind of showing you what I usually did. So, and then we're going to do a counterclockwise interpolation. So we're gonna go up to X 2.5, which is the diameter I wanted to make this at. Z negative 500, because we're in absolute programming, and I explained that in a previous video, the difference between absolute and incremental. So we're half inch radius. So then you have to do an R 500 radius, 0.5, I'm sorry. Then you make sure you have to write G01 after that, because you don't want to forget to do that. Because it'll stay in, once you activate that, it stays active until it's canceled. So now I want to go G's, Z negative two inches deep. So we're going two inches deep. And I want to feed up to X 4.25. So that's that port there. Because we figured 475, 4.750 was that diameter minus 250. And we have to double that, so that's 500. So that comes up to 4.25. So we're gonna go up to 4.25. Then we're gonna do a 45 degree chamfer. And so 250, 45 degree. So we're gonna go up to X 4.750, Z negative 2.25. Z negative, our next move, three inches deep. So we're going right to here. And now we're going to feed out of the part X five point. So if the part is five inches in diameter, I'm going 50 thousandths above the diameter of the stock feeding out. And then I'm going to do a rapid move back to X 5.1. And with can cycles, wherever you started at, you want to end at, at the same number. You can't have it at two different planes because it just won't take. So I want to wrap it up to X 5.1. So now we're going to come back up. And this is, say we started here, and this is where we're going to end. So that is line number 20. That's all you have to do. So now that Q becomes 20. So why it's like that, I don't know. That's just the way it is. So your P is your beginning value, so that's line number 12. Your Q is your ending line of code. I'm trying to figure out how to say it. And that's down here. So all this, you don't have to write a million lines. You just tell your, your exact locations and the machine will do the work for you. It'll, add, it'll come in, it'll just cut, it'll cut out, come back up, wrap it over, come back down. It's just doing one of these things. And it's just gonna keep chipping away, going this direction. And it automatically cuts everything for you, all the chamfers, this, the radiuses. Now the one thing I wanna explain, and I hope this video isn't too long, because I don't wanna make it very, very long. What is this U code and W code? A U code is, if it's a positive value, that's how much you want it to stay above this. So if I added 20,000, say U.02, it's gonna stay 20,000 above all your X dimensions. If you were doing an, a cut on the inside, such as a boring cycle, that U code would be a negative number. That would stay below the finish uh, or final cut. But for this example, I'm just going to leave it zero because I'm assuming we're not going to do a finish pass. If you were, you would put, say I always left about a 20 thousandths value on my U dimensions. And then I would use another tool to come in and program a G70, which then you would write G, let me see if I'm sorry for this kind of dragged out video. 
So you can always write G70 P 12 Q 20 for your next tool. You, you get, you know, you wrap your next tool up and then you'd program that and that would pick up all this and do your finish pass. But sorry I went off on that. That's, that's for another video. So anyways, we'll... W code, that is how far your, your Z is going in. If it's set to zero, it's going to go right to whatever your Z dimension is. If you add a positive value to that, it's going to stay in front and won't, it won't do the complete depth. So if you had Z negative 2.0 and you had 20 thousands on your W code, it would actually do Z negative 1.980. And then when you call up a G70, it would then do the finish pass. Depth of cut. I'm doing 80 thousands. So what that means is it's going to jump down 80 thousands for every cut. This you can play with. That's however how heavy and aggressive you want to be with your cutting. So you can play with that. And your feed. I just threw 10 thousandths per revolution just for this demo. That you can play with too. You might have to fiddle around with the load on the spindle, on the cutter, all that stuff. So that's all one line. So, uh, even if you have, say you had feed moves here, say you had five thousandths here, I don't know, say we put F, 008 here, uh, F005. That won't come into play unless you are doing a finishing pass. During a G71, all those get overridden and they stay at 10,000 throughout the whole machine cycle. The only way you can pick up these is when you do a G70. And then that's how that works. I don't know how else to really describe it. And then once this, it does all its cutting, it'll do a pass and then it'll come back through and do another finish pass to clean it up. And you're pretty much done. I, I hope it wasn't too confusing. I hope it sounds okay the way I explained it. Um, so after that was done, after the machine knows it's all done, it's going to jump down to this line right here which is, well, I'm turning the coolant off. And then from there, well, I ran out of chalkboard. From there on out, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can send them your tool home and cancel it and be done. Um, so for this demonstration, your, your one tool primarily did everything. So, yeah, that's about it. Well, if you haven't seen my other videos, I hope you uh, check them out. And there's, you can even write incremental values in here. And just, it's endless what you can do. And I'm trying not to make it super complex. Other than that, um, I'll probably try to do a video incorporating the use of the G70. I mean, it's really not difficult. I mean, all it's gonna do is just, like I said earlier, it's just gonna pick up the Z codes and just do your finish pass for you and call it done. And you know, I know there's other you know G72, 73, 74s, and they all do a specific you know, style of can cycle moves. But I use this a lot in my experience at my other job. So okay, I'm rambling on. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to keep getting updates when I make videos like this. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you again soon.